So I picked up this motion activated solar powered night light for ten dollars from Kmart today and uh, let's have a look at how it works. So I'll start by covering up the solar cell and you can see that a blue light comes on in these two bands here and there's a reasonably bright white light there it provides um, certainly ample illumination to find a set of keys at night and that sort of thing. Now if I just make sure that the solar cell is covered up and also the motion sensor that's here for long enough we can see that the LED starts to fade out quite nicely but the blue LEDs, the two blue LED bands of light here, they stay illuminated. So yeah, at night when no motion is detected, blue LEDs stay on, so I guess you can find this thing. And then as soon as motion is detected, on comes that light. The white light stays on for, what was that, 15 or 20 seconds or so, and uh, then gradually fades out, which is quite nice. But the thing that I found astonishing about this is that looking at the specs here, it is fitted with um, an LIFEP04, so I think that's lithium iron phosphate. It's a lithium uh, battery, rechargeable battery chemistry in here at 3.2 volts. Uh, so this is the first time I've seen such a thing. Usually these solar powered garden lights might have a 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cell. This is an entirely more modern battery chemistry to find in a product like this and certainly a product that retails for 10 bucks. And uh, also a rating there for the solar panel, so 5 volts at 30 milliamps. There's potentially quite a lot that's hackable about this, this little unit motion sensing uh, could house some other electronics potentially run off this 3.2 volt battery and um, yeah perhaps provide uh, a wireless motion sensor or, or something like that with uh, a microcontroller that spends most of its time in sleep mode but before we can contemplate those kind of projects it'd be interesting to tear this thing apart, have a look at what's inside. There are five screws in total on the back of this unit. And this is the last of them. And it just looks like this bit of plastic backing just comes straight off to reveal the electronics. So Okay, that's interesting. There's a little switch here, and uh, it did mention on the packet that you could try test out this light by pressing down on the plastic, which I just thought was kind of a bit nuts. Didn't quite understand what they meant by that, and so obviously they didn't press hard enough, but I guess the idea is that you press down on this plastic, and the little light turns the... Um, turns the light on or something like that. Anyway, it doesn't look like it's working that well, but we've got that. Got a blue LED here, kind of uh, straw hat style shaped blue LED, quite nice. And then here we've got our white LED, which isn't, doesn't look very well held in there. There we go, bending it around. We can see it's emitting quite a bit of light. It just looks like it's held in there with some kind of plastic weld that's not holding up so well. But the actual guts of the electronics look to be in a further layer of protection here. So let's screw that open right now. This can just prise open.
and uh, there we have it. So there are the internals of this thing. This the the little cell here. So uh, LIFEPO4, 3.2 volts, 300 milliamp hours, 14, 500, so that means a 14 millimeter diameter cell and 5 centimeters long. Oh, very interesting. And then here is the the electronics. So there's a, a switch here to have it in an off state or an on state. I guess so it doesn't discharge too quickly in the package at the store. And uh, inductor capacitor here. And um, on the back, just a few bits of um, Electronics here looks like perhaps something like a, a voltage regulator there. Uh, a few kind of um, diodes, resistors, a few transistor looking things here. Probably just simple circuitry to get the output uh, from this passive infrared detector here and to provide that uh, short duration and uh, timeout when there's been no motion detected for 15 seconds or so. So that's pretty cool. These um, black and yellow wires here just go off to the, the solar panel on the front here through a bit of um, what looks like hot milk glue and yeah just a few flying leads here three from a PCB here that has the um, the passive infrared motion detector here so that, that PCB has just got three leads off it so it looks like the passive infrared detector is the only thing that's attached to it and then that's just used to, to screw that down and hold it captive as well as the, the Frainer lens here which is through that arrangement held captive to the to the outside case here so yeah, um, it's a pretty interesting bit of kit ton of room here if you wanted to hack this to uh, do some kind of custom application Temperature logging, humidity logging, just logging, motion sensing and that sort of thing. It's um, easy to see how this could be adapted to perhaps fit an Arduino. And because this battery chemistry is at 3.2 volts, it uh, opens up a few more opportunities there for, for running something like an Arduino at a higher voltage than the typical solar garden lights would operate at. Yeah, anyway, interesting find, $10 that came out in Australia, probably available all over the world. Okay, so just while I've got the little LED liberated here, you can see what the uh, button's intended purpose is. So when you hold down the button, the LED turns on, gives you a preview of the thing you're buying and how bright it is really. Yeah, interesting stuff. Good hacking potential and uh, quite good for its intended purpose too, just as a motion activated nightlight finding your keys. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, leave a comment. Thanks for watching.